Hello and welcome to Biology. This is where we take a look at some of the biggest science stories of the week and perhaps also some of the silliest. So Tom, what's the first story we're going to look at? Um, it's, it's a thing called the, uh, the Skylon, which is a British designed space ship, really, which is going to hopefully revolutionise the way uh, we get things into space and possibly the way we get around our planet. Mm. Just, just, uh, just a plane like this without any of the big, big bulky rockets and so on and, and the big fuel tanks that fall off will be able to take off and get in space on its own and possibly fly from London to Sydney in less than four hours. But also go into space? Yes, yes. The idea with this is that it acts like an ordinary jet plane for the first beginning of its flight and so the air comes in these bits and it flames come out the back, basically, and it takes off and gets up to about Mach 5 like that. It's five times the speed of sound, I should say. And then when the air gets too thin, it shuts these down and uses a small amount of its own oxygen with it and becomes a, a space rocket, a traditional rocket, which launches it into space at incredible speeds. It is actually quite an exciting thing. It does mean they'll reduce the, the price of space travel if it works by about 95%. I mean, the thing is, uh, this bit and this bit are all fuel tanks. The actual payload is here. Of the 82 metres, only about, I'm just guessing here, but probably about 10 metres of it is actually for the payload, for the people carrying it. So, I mean, it'll still, if you still want to go to Sydney for a three-week holiday, you will still get on the Airbus or whatever. Right, our next story is um, about a possible breakthrough in genetic research. Is that right, Richard? Yeah, so scientists have uh, come up with what they hope may be a new therapy for Down syndrome. Um, basically, everybody, uh, you, me, people at home have uh, a, a two sets of 23 chromosomes in every cell of their body. Uh, people with Down syndrome, however, have an extra chromosome. Uh, so they have three chromosomes of chromosome 21. And it's the, uh, the extra proteins and extra material that's produced by this chromosome that leads to the symptoms of Down syndrome. So what the scientists have done is that they've been able to uh, use a piece of genetic information which they can insert into the cells to turn off this extra chromosome. So essentially, uh, the hope would be that that would prevent these symptoms that causes Down syndrome. And how far along is the research? It's still at a really early stage. They've only been doing it in the laboratory in some cells, uh, I think in a petri dish. Yeah. Um, so they've still got to do the animal research. They've still got to do all the work in humans. So it's a long way away. It's probably at least 10 years away before we're going to see any kind of therapy that can be used in patients. And presumably there are some serious ethical concerns about this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, people with Down syndrome live perfectly happy lives. And so parents and, uh, and the patients themselves often don't feel that they need any kind of therapies. But Down syndrome does bring with it some health burden as well. So I think ultimately it's going to come down to uh, individual parents as to whether they really want to have this kind of therapy if it does actually manage to uh, get to that stage. And finally, um, Richard has to answer the call of nature. Richard, explain. <laughs> a, a new way of powering your mobile phone. Right. Engineers have managed to uh, harness the power of urine, or piss. Yes. Um, <laughs> they have produced a fuel cell which yeah. uses bacteria to break down urine, uh, and this produces an electrical uh, current which they can then use to charge up a mobile phone. Fascinating. <laughs> how, how much urine or piss does it take to, uh, to charge a mobile phone? At the moment, quite a lot. I think the, the, the fuel cell they've produced is about the same size as a car battery. They managed to charge up the phone to make one call. Will you be able to pee enough? I mean, that's the question. Yeah, I mean, potentially. I mean, I don't know how much urine the average person produces during the day, but I suspect it's quite a lot. So, what have we learned this week? First, we could be taking day trips to Sydney. That there might be a new therapy for Down syndrome. And that dropping your phone down the toilet might not be such a terrible thing after all. For more videos like this, um, for me and Richard talking about science things, please, we beg you, we implore you, please subscribe to our channel.